NYPD Commissioner James O'Neill is holding a briefing to announce security measures that will be in place for the upcoming Jewish High Holy Days. He and other officials are at One Police Plaza right now with more. Let's when listen in. That's the notion 
that all immigration is part of a vast conspiracy to replace whites with people of color. And do you know who is behind this conspiracy? You know who. The marchers at Charlottesville, they shouted loud and clear, Jews will not replace us. Well, clearly there's a cloud over this high holy day period as we march into the future and we concern ourselves with these acts of hatred. The FBI has indicated that there's been a sharp acceleration within each of the last three years of anti-Semitic incidents. The Anti-Defamation League has reported that within the last 10 months alone, there's been a steep upward spike of 57% in anti-Jewish occurrences. The arrival of the new year always is a time of mixed emotions, of fear, and of hope. The anxieties are especially intense this year, but so are our hopes. They're deeply felt because they are rooted in Jewish tradition, which maintains that the human species, for all its faults and weaknesses, nonetheless still has an aspiration to make this universe a better place in which to live. And those hopes are centered in the personality of Abraham, who is the number one biblical personality in our, in our high holy day liturgy. Abraham actually is sacred to all of the great religions of the Western world. Whether you're Jewish, Catholic, Protestant, Greek Orthodox, or Muslim, Abraham is hailed as a progenitor of monotheism. And God promised Abraham that a great people would come forth from him who would provide an era of peace, justice, and love to all of humanity. And Abraham believed God, and he trusted that God would bring his promise to reality. And Abraham bequeathed to all of us a non-existent confidence in the future, a belief that even though the reality is very different from what we're confronting right now, things will change and things would get better if we worked towards it. And that became the byword of the Jewish people who are to analyze what the wrongs are in our society right now, but to aim and work towards a better state of things. In a more practical way, the Jewish community of New York City feels very confident and cheerful as it confronts the Jewish New Year because of the backing of the New York City Police Department. Quite frankly, without the assistance of the mayor and the police commissioner and the men and women of this department, the beautiful words of the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution would just be beautiful words. But because, Mr. Mayor, Police Commissioner O'Neill, because of you and the men and women of this department, we know that this is a reality that all of us can rely upon and which will sustain us in the days ahead. Commissioner, I'd like to bring to your attention a man who once approached the famous sculptor Michelangelo. And he asked Michelangelo, how did you know that Moses was in the rock? And so we ask you, how did you know that the NYPD could become the most diverse police department in the world? How did you know that you could fulfill all of the normal domestic responsibilities that evolve upon any urban police agency in a meaningful and fulfilling way, and at the same time, fulfill the national and international duties that devolve upon the NYPD, precisely because of the status of New York 
as the virtual capital of the world. And how did you know, Commissioner, that you could protect all of the groups that live in this city and insist upon absolute freedom and equality for all and still reach the highest standards of safety? And with all the demands on your time in order to keep up to date with the latest strategies and technologies in fighting crime and in fighting domestic terrorism and other forms of antisocial malice, how do you still manage to insist that this department live up to its greatest standards and also to the fundamental tenets of the American ethos? And that is the ultimate work of life, the sanctity of human character, and the freedom and equality of all groups, the redemptive potential of compassion, and the transformative power of love. Like Pericles, who 2,000 years ago said of Athens, we do not imitate, we set a model for others. So the NYPD and New York City does not imitate. We set a model for others. No, I can end with Fiddler on the Roof. Let me end with Fiddler on the Roof. You may remember that scene in which Tenya suddenly, unexpectedly, and uncharacteristically waxes romantic. And he asks his wife, Goldie, do you love me? Goldie is taken aback by the question. Finally, she blurts out, for 25 years, I've cooked your meals, I've washed your clothes, I've sewn your garments, I've raised your children, I've kept your home. Do I love you? And then she blurts out a passionate and definitive yes. Well, there's another love affair in the city. And that's the love affair between the New York City Police Department and between us and with the Jewish community of this city. We don't often use romantic terms to describe it, but it's very real. And uh, we're so thankful that that love affair is manifest not only in the season of the year, but all the time in the myriad of deeds performed by our police officers to protect our rights and prerogatives as Jews, and also evident in the reciprocation provided by the Jewish community in which we articulate our gratitude and our appreciation for all that this department gives to us and to all the people of this city. Ladies and gentlemen, let us pray that that love affair goes on for a long time to come. And may this be the year when the philosophy of Abraham, who did not live to see the fulfillment of all of his aspirations for mankind, becomes a reality. And people live according to the way God intended us to live. May the year 5780 be the year when all human beings find their way toward the realization of the promise of the psalmist. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell together in an atmosphere of harmony, unity, and love. Shana Tova Uduka, may all of you be inscribed and sealed for a good and healthy year.
this city. And something about the rabbi, I've heard this speak before, but he really struck a chord today. Just how special it is what we have here in this extraordinary place. And I think as New Yorkers, sometimes we don't stop for a moment to take stock of how we do a really important thing for this country, for this world, approving every day that people can get along, that people can live in mutual respect, that faith and nationalities and ethnicities and languages do not have to divide, but actually can be the basis for a strong and unified society. So all these things happen every day in New York City, and they happen in large measure because our security is always provided and secured and guaranteed by the NYPD. So we have a lot to celebrate today, but I do want to ask you to take a moment just to thank Rabbi Cass for all he does and what he said to us today. So, as a friendly competition between the cities of the world, and Ambassador Diana and I were talking a moment ago, and of course he spoke up for the importance of Jerusalem and the world, and no one doubts that. But we have something, I say this with humility, we have something Jerusalem does not have. We have the largest Jewish population of any city on earth, right here. And it's my obligation as mayor to ensure the Jewish community here is protected, not just at the high holy days, but every day of the year. And it is the same responsibility of NYPD as well. And I agree with Rabbi Cass. The NYPD understands and respects and loves the Jewish community, and it is reciprocated. And everyone understands the times we're living in, the dangers we face, and every day the NYPD is there for the community and for every community. And that's a blessing. My obligation as mayor is to ensure that every step is taken to protect this community. Because this community is under attack, it's under attack in ways we haven't seen in quite a while. But Rabbi Pat reminds us the Jewish community has been subjected to discrimination and hatred and violence for millennia. And that makes it all the more important that we stay vigilant. And that's why we're gathered today. We're gathered today in solidarity. We're gathered today in vigilance to always show the community that we are on guard, but to remind anyone who would do a malicious act towards this community that we are watching and we will act and there will be consequences. We will not accept hatred in New York City. Thank you to all who are here today. Of course, you'll hear from Commissioner O'Neill, and you'll see another example of his extraordinary leadership in this department, which has brought police and community closer together across this city. And of course, I want to thank you for his extraordinary work fighting hate crimes deputy inspector Mark Molinari. Now, this is going to be a problem because I mentioned the commissioner, but you clapped for the deputy inspector. So I want to say again, I want to thank Commissioner Jimmy O'Neill for all he does. <laughs> it's okay, Mark. I, I cleaned that up for you. Also, for my administration, as someone who has been working for years and years to bring our communities closer together with each other, and police and community closer together, our Commissioner for Community Affairs, Marco Carrion. Thank you. And a newcomer to our team who's doing such important work already to get to the root causes of these hate crimes, to stop them before they happen, to make sure we're there for anyone who, God forbid, is a victim. Let's thank the new Executive Director of the Office to Prevent Hate Crimes, Deborah Lauder. 
And again, a warm welcome to Ambassador Dani Diane. Thank you for bringing you here on behalf of the State of Israel. Representing the community in Albany, which is always a task not for the timid, I want to thank my good friend, Assemblymember Simka Eichenstein. I want to also thank a great community leader who also is possessed of tremendous lung power, Rabbi Michael Melnick. Thank you. And uh, someone who I have worked with for years and years and is really one of the people who helps glue this city together, the Executive Vice President of the New York Board of Rabbis, Rabbi Joseph Potasnik. And I've been handed a note. I want to welcome another good friend, Councilmember Chaim Deutsch. Thank you for being here. So I want to pick up on what Rabbi Kass was saying. This resurgence of hate crimes, we have to understand its full meaning. First of all, it speaks to us to a core truth. The world should have been revulsed by all that happened during the Holocaust, and we should have had a moment in human history where hatred directed at the Jewish people was once and for all banished from the earth, where people had learned the great lesson and would never go back. But I don't think any of us, when we really think about it, believe that anti-Semitism went away after 1945. It may have been submerged, it may have been quiet, but I always remind us that even many of the perpetrators of those horrid acts walked free after and kept their vile philosophy alive, waiting for a day where they could revive it. And unfortunately, that day has come. You see it in the white supremacy movement in this country, in the nativism that's regrown here. You see it all over Europe. And we have to be very blunt and honest about this. The rabbi said it best. The white supremacy movement, the nativist movement, it is only a matter of time before it directs its hatred and its violence even more towards the Jewish community. And that's why we cannot tolerate these movements filled with hate. We have to understand what they are made of and why we must combat them at every turn. We saw a horrid, painful inkling of what some intend in the massacre at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. We saw it in the shootings in Poway, California. We saw it even here in our own city. Now is the time to reject that white supremacy movement. Now is the time to reject nativism. Now is the time to protect this community and every community. Many of you, if I say one word, it will bring to your mind a clear historical lesson, and that word is Munich. That moment in the 1930s where the Holocaust might have been averted if Hitler was not appeased. We cannot make that mistake with the white supremacists and the nativists and all that would do us harm. And I want to speak one other truth today, and Law enforcement officials all over this nation know, because this movement is not new either. Sometimes it's called militias in different parts of this country. But oftentimes, a movement of hatred directed at different peoples in this country actually directs their greatest violence towards law enforcement. And that is absolutely unacceptable and another reason why we cannot let that hatred spread to protect our officers who serve us. So what we have learned painfully is all the things that we thought couldn't happen here can happen here. And we've seen the rise of hate crimes in this city, even this year compared to last year. 
But we cannot be afraid. We cannot be depressed. We can't be put back on our heels because a small number of people mean to tear down what we've built up in this great city. One of the many wonderful characteristics of New Yorkers, New Yorkers do not allow themselves to be intimidated. New Yorkers do not allow our values to be trampled upon. And New Yorkers will never allow hate to grow in our midst. And it's about every single person in this room, but it's about all of us in every community. We all can participate in stopping hatred. We can identify it. We can confront it. And most especially, if you see something, say something. Because words of hate can turn into acts of hate. And all it takes is letting the NYPD know when there's a threat. And I assure you that the NYPD knows how to neutralize those threats and how to protect people like no other police force on this earth. So we will keep this community safe. We'll make sure there's extra patrol cars and physical presence of our officers during the High Holy Days. You'll see them in front of synagogues and yeshivas and community centers. And you'll hear more from the police commissioner on this strategy, but I want to affirm up front for everyone to be at ease on one point. There is no credible threat at this moment towards this city and towards the Jewish community of this city, but that makes us no less vigilant. And again, we know they say the best defense is a good offense. And that good offense will come from our Office for the Prevention of Hate Crimes. And again, thank you, Deborah Lauder. We're going to stop hatred before it rises its ugly head in this city. So everyone, I've told you what I believe are some important truths, some hard truths, but I don't say it with pessimism, just like Rabbi Cass indicated that beautiful vignette about the letter from the Jewish community of Newport to George Washington and his response. This country learned long ago to favor our better angels, and that's what makes us strong, and that was what makes us great, and that's what makes us admired all over the world. I am optimistic that in this city we will meet this challenge. I'm optimistic that this city can prove that we can turn back the forces of hate. I'm optimistic that this city can continue to be a beacon to the world. And I am optimistic that in the new year, we will learn to love each other more, support each other more, reach out a hand to each other more in a spirit of true respect and hope. A very happy new year to all. Shana Tava. And thank you so much, Mayor de Blasio. It is now my honor to introduce the Police Commissioner of the City of New York, the Honorable James P. O'Neill. Thanks, Jamel. Welcome, everybody, to One Police Plaza. Uh, I did have some pre uh, prepared remarks, but being that Rabbi Cass had about 20 questions for me, I guess I have to answer all of them. So would you give me about five questions, Rabbi? Yeah. All right. So I have the answer to, to all five of them. Uh, and it's no sleep. That's how we do it all. Not just me, but uh, all the executive staff, the 36,000 uniformed cops, and the 18,000 civilians. Um, I've never worked with a more dedicated group of people. And so many of them are here today. Uh, I'd like to thank the community affairs officers that are here today for the great work that they do each and every day. I'd like to thank all the precinct commanders that are here today. They have, uh, they have some of the toughest jobs in the NYPD, uh, also some of the best jobs, too. And they get to have a direct impact on things locally. And that's where it needs to be. I mean, this is a big city, 8.6 million people, 310 square miles, 36,000 cops. 
Um, we do our best to keep everybody safe. And the way we're going to continue to do that, make them even safer, is to make sure that at the precinct level, there's a connection. That's how it has to be. And that's how it's been working. You know, look at where we are in 2019 and contrast that to even five years ago or 10 or 15, 20, 30 years ago. The city's been transformed. It's been transformed by the men and women of the NYPD, our great partners in the FBI, the DEA, the ATF, the Marshal Service, and the Jewish community, and all 8.6 million New Yorkers. Now, we're in a good place in New York City, and I don't know if every other city in the United States enjoys it the way we do. And we do it because we work together. I mean, look who's here this morning. It's not only members of the Jewish faith. We have members of other faiths that are here. Look at them all. Can our chaplains please stand up and give them a huge round of applause, please? So welcome to our 2019 High Holy Days briefing. And this briefing has actually been going on since the late 1970s. It's really an example of how the community and the police can effectively work together. And it was a, a different city back when we started this, as you all know. But what hasn't changed is our commitment to your safety. I'm proud to welcome everybody back here to prepare for another safe and successful High Holy Days. The members of the NYPD understand that living in a free and safe community requires a daily commitment by both the police and the people we serve. It's our job to protect you, to make you feel safe, to make you be safe, but it's your job to work with us as we adapt and respond to anyone and anything that threatens our communities. It's not easy, but it gets done far more effectively when we do it together. That's actually the only way it gets done. Those of you here today understand that, and we've been collaborating on this effort for decades. We're very proud of what we've accomplished over that time, but it's clear that we have much more work to do. And uh, Inspector Molinari, and Mr. May, by the way, when they clapped for Inspector Molinari, they were clapping for me too, so I didn't take it personally. <laughs> it was a collective clap. <laughs> the hate crime stats, and they're not stats, they represent people. For the first three quarters of 2019 are indeed troubling. We've seen spikes in both anti-Semitic crime and also in overall hate crimes citywide, and Mark will go into that. We've also seen an increase in arrests, too, and Mark will talk about that, too. We're not going to hide from this. It only strengthens our resolve to combat any and all forms of bias, prejudice, and hate. And as I said before, we need your help. I applaud those who have come forward to report these intolerable acts, and they truly are, because it's the first vital step in a thorough and extensive process towards justice. We take all reported incidents of bias very seriously. As you know, we have the best hate crimes task force in the country. They're working 24 hours a day. We can give them a round of applause. They're working every day with our precinct cops, detective squads, clergy leaders, and more. And remember, this isn't a time for fear. It's a time for vigilance. It's vital that you keep an open dialogue with us here at the NYPD. And we've worked hard to make that easier for all New Yorkers since the inception of neighborhood policing. You have the community affairs officers that are out there each and every day. You have the NCOs, the steady sector cops, the precinct commanders, the XOs, all the platoon commanders, so many different people that you can talk to if you have an issue. Remember, public safety is a shared responsibility. responsibility. It requires you to take ownership and keep an eye out in the neighborhoods where you live, where you work, and where you worship. And no one knows these streets better than you do, so we rely on you to let us know when something doesn't look right. It also requires us, your police department, to be flexible enough to direct our resources where they're needed most. And you're going to see that over the next couple of weeks. It's not only our precinct personnel that will be redeployed, but we have a lot of specialized units that will be out there, too. Critical Response Command, Strategic Response Group, they'll all be out there. Some you'll see, some you won't see. And all of the work that gets done in the background with our Intelligence Bureau and our great partnership, as I said, with the FBI. We have to be adaptable with who, where, and why we deploy, because the threats we face continually change. But the NYPD is definitely committed to meeting every, every, every challenge, without a doubt. We'll never tolerate hate crime, we'll never tolerate hate in our city in any form, and we'll continue to build and strengthen our partnerships in the Jewish community and all across New York City to ensure that everyone in every neighborhood is safe. And furthermore, as I said when I started, that they feel safe too. Thank you again for your attention this morning. 
Thanks again for being here. And Rabbi Cash, the love you were talking about, I thought you were going to talk about the fact that Rabbi Potasnik was here from the fire department. So I was a little disappointed in that. So Rabbi Potastic is going to speak after our musical performance, but before we do that, I just want to acknowledge that uh, thank you for everything you do for the city. Thank you for everything you do for Dan Nigro and his wonderful people. But thank you for what you do for the police department, too. I know you're a big supporter. We'll try to keep that in this room. We won't let the fire department know that. But uh, thanks for being a friend. Everybody, really, I appreciate that you're here this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner O'Neill. And now with the musical selection, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Shira Choir featuring cantor Yoel Ausch. Well, we've been watching a special event at one police plaza ahead of the Jewish High Holy Days, and the NYPD discusses a plan for security measures that will be increased as we approach that because of the uptick of anti-Semitic crimes here in the city. 